Thank you for watching. My name is Glenn Morgan and this is We The Govern. Today we're going to be talking about solutions to the drug addiction and homeless problems that proliferate in our cities and how solutions in Washington state could apply to where you live as well. All right, we're back to Washington State, and although I'm going to be discussing a problem that exists here, the solutions and the problem we have found are proliferating everywhere in our country, especially in the urban environments. And even though this is a local issue, we are focused on solving a problem that really is national in scope, but there are local solutions that we can find to help solve the drug addiction and the homeless crisis that really is permeating all of these big metro areas in the country, and particularly on the West Coast, but yet it's spreading everywhere. And so let's talk about uh, a solution coming out of Washington State that I think is very reasonable and worthwhile to look at. Now, really Seattle gained national prominence for its absurd and really out of control drug addiction and homeless problems in the city when Seattle is Dying uh, was produced as a documentary here a couple years ago. And that was followed up by a second documentary called The Fight for the Soul of Seattle, which came out a few months ago. And both of these videos really featured Seattle and talking about the drug addiction problems that were permeating the city. You know, a city that until then, you know, is oftentimes viewed as sort of the uh, high tech, uh, beautiful environment, uh, you know, uh, but not the, it's a backwater of America in many ways. And yet it was kind of a cool, hip place to be. And yet the homeless problems and the drug addiction problems and the crime problems and the political cowardice issues that were highlighted in these videos really uh, gained a lot of national attention. And because of that, it really shined a spotlight, a very necessary spotlight on some of these problems. Uh, Seattle is Dying, which was also played on Como News, which was the uh, group that uh, kind of sponsored it. Uh, that since it was launched in March of 2019 on YouTube, has over 8.3 million views for a one hour long documentary video. And the Fight for the Soul of Seattle, which was just launched a couple months ago, already has 3.4 million views. The Seattle's Dine has been viewed by more people than who live in the state of Washington. And so because of that, you can really see that this problem, or at least being aware of it, has become far bigger than just something that's happening in Seattle or uh, in the state, state of Washington. It really is a national issue, and it's gained that kind of attention. Now, these videos were produced by Eric Johnson, who's a reporter that works for Como News, and this was a genuine act of journalistic courage because really what you're seeing is that most of the journalists and the traditional media have largely attempted to gloss over or ignore or deny or downplay the significance of the collapse in the city of Seattle and the problems with these homeless drug addict camps as they proliferated throughout the country. There's been a real collapse of journalistic integrity when it comes to dealing with this and Eric Johnson really does deserve to be commended for being willing to focus so much on exposing this problem despite despite all the attacks that have been directed at him after he's done this. Now, in the process of documenting and raising awareness, both of these videos did raise some serious and significant solutions that were proposed at the end. Seattle's Dine uh, looked at a Rhode Island program that was helping people get off drugs, and also he referenced the using the, converting the McNeil Island facility, which we'll talk about later, as a facility that could be used for this purpose. In the fight for the soul of Seattle, uh, then he also kind of provided another option where they discussed proposing a drug treatment program with brand new facilities that would be dedicated and purposed solely for solving uh, this process of helping people get off drugs and get off the streets. And at least there's some kind of an effort to find the solutions because right now, let's just face it, the political leadership in Washington State and in these cities is absolutely, totally lacking uh, the ability or even desire to try to solve the problem. And that's true whether it's the city of Seattle and the city council that Eric Johnson discussed in both those videos, or the empty uh, suits that supposedly occupy these seats in the Olympia City Council, where I have also discussed uh, some of the problems locally. Uh, the city of Olympia is the capital of the state of Washington, and uh, those people can't are, have no interest in solving the problem any more than the people who live in the city of Seattle. And so that's why it's really an issue, because this that you see here today, which is in the city of Olympia, on the other side of Capitol Lake, 
within sight of the governor's mansion and the Capitol itself is what the future holds. This is the policy. This is the utopia. This is the plan. This is the solution that the current political leadership has. And uh, this is how all the green spaces in the city of Seattle, the city of Olympia, Bellingham, other cities, uh, San Francisco, Portland, this is what all of them are starting to look like. The, it looks more like a landfill or a toxic waste dump where people are living in this environment, throwing the garbage everywhere, uh, throwing their used needles everywhere, uh, polluting everywhere, and not living in healthy or productive circumstances or situations that would allow them to get out of this. It seems to be only a downward spiral from here. And inevitably, when you have an environment like this that becomes lawless, that doesn't recognize social norms, that uh, encourages and it proliferates then crime to support the drug habits and a lack of uh, community involvement or focus in actually solving this problem. It really just gets worse and worse. This type of situation is absolutely not healthy. And yet it is the outcome that we have seen of the current policies implemented by all the local political leaders in Washington state. And part of the reason for this is that grant grifting is worth billions of dollars. And this is the process where solutions are supposedly proposed, and mostly they're just grants, uh, either federal, state, or local, that one way or another comes through the government, gets washed through it, and they kick it out to supposed nonprofits or other entities to address, solve, study, whatever associated with the homeless drug addict problem. But unfortunately, there's a lot of money to be made in ensuring this problem only gets worse, whether it's providing tarps, tents, food, propane, supplies, clothing, uh, uh, cleanup of the trails after they've allowed them to be filled with needles and garbage like this trail in Olympia, and uh, just simply allowing this garbage to proliferate all over the, the uh, urban and the green space environment around these cities. There's a lot of money to ensure that there's just no solution, that it, there's no solution at all. Because as long as you don't fix the problem, the grants keep being increased. Letting drug addiction become a dominant lifestyle and in the city of Olympia or the city of Seattle or Portland. Making sure there's cash that you are kicking out to all the vendors and grant grifters and non so-called so nonprofits and vendors that it's just a constant flow of money, and that flow of money is increasing exponentially every year. Just lots more of it's getting out there. So as long as you don't fix the problem, the gravy train just keeps rolling and everybody gets paid. And unfortunately, this failure to try to fix the problem ensures these people do not live in healthy in, uh, environments. So living in these camps is clearly not a compassionate or a healthy outcome. And yet that is exactly the policy plan that all of these local elected officials and their grant grifters have. Drug addiction needs to be addressed because it leads to crime, it creates pollution, and it harms others. And the addicts themselves just are harming themselves, not just with the drug addiction, but also how they're living and the abuse that they're spreading through the community. It needs to be solved. Now, Let's talk about some of these solutions. And it's not a perfect solution. It's just a way to actually get started down the road to start actually solving this problem rather than just simply making it worse and justifying it as an excuse to kick out billions more dollars in grants to groups that have zero interest in ever solving the problem. So let's look at three nearby facilities in Washington State in this area um, that could be repurposed to make an immediate and significant impact. The first facility, and I've talked about this before, is the Evergreen State College. This is located within 15 minutes of a good number of these homeless junkie camps that already exist in Olympia, and it's only about an hour and a half or two hours, depending on traffic and I-5, from Seattle. It's not that far away. It's a thousand acre facility. It's close to, reasonably close to I-5, and currently, uh, it includes dorms, it already has kitchens, it has wastewater treatment, uh, it has garbage service, ample parking, and it's mostly made of durable concrete construction. This is a large campus. It's one of the largest campuses in Washington state. And right now, it is largely a failed experimental educational institution. It was built in the 70s. And it's currently empty. And it's not just because it's been empty for a year because of the uh, COVID uh, pandemic. 
it had already had a massive decline in student enrollment, almost 50% over several years after the 2017 campus riots and some of the weird woke crowd problems that this uh, college campus has endured. And it would serve a much higher purpose if it could be converted from the waste of facilities that it is right now and turned into a homeless drug rehab facility. And some of the current staff there could even be repurposed to become uh, involved in that process. They could uh, be converted from professors of whatever studies program they have, but instead perhaps they could help educate some of these uh, drug addicts as they uh, get out of detox or get back on their feet. Maybe they could help educate them to get a job or help run the kitchens or help pick up garbage around the campus. Uh, that Anything that they could do would be certainly a better use than what they're spending their time doing right now. And if that's not enough, there's also a lot of former uh, Evergreen State College grads that are unemployed in the area. Um, they could also be brought in. Um, this group of people, I'm sure, would like to come back to campus. And getting them to help with um, this homeless drug rehab process uh, would be useful. It's a great location. It would be the perfect place to use for this purpose. Now, another location that's also located in Thurston County, about 30 minutes south of Olympia, about five miles from where I live, is the Maple Lane Correctional Facility, and it's largely empty, and this could be used and converted into a detox center. And this is because when people are trying to come down off hard drugs, um, that is a difficult thing for both the body to go through and for somebody to mentally go through that process. Many people that I've interviewed and talked to who are drug addicts, former drug addicts, recovering drug addicts, uh, many of them told me that they only became clean when they were arrested and put in jail and they couldn't get access to the drugs anymore. And that allowed them to kind of, uh, the way they've explained it to me, is just, you know, kind of the fog lifting and coming out of this terrible abyss that they were in and uh, recognizing that they need to clean up their life. We have to have some kind of facilities available for people who have chosen to live in these camps and dump their needles everywhere and turn to crime. We have to have some kind of an option for them to be able to get clean so they at least have a chance to get back into real life and have a productive, more meaningful life. And a facility like Maple Lane would serve that purpose for that temporary period of time really well. And, you know, it's close to these camps, and it would be this secure facility uh, where they would give them an opportunity to get clean in this safe environment. It's a relatively large place right now, and it's sitting there largely empty. Uh, it would be able to handle a large population of these detox patients, hundreds of them, immediately. And it could be expanded to even handle more within that same footprint. And because they'd only be there for six months or so until they kind of got clean before maybe shift going up to the Evergreen uh, College campus, again, not far away, um, this could really be a first step immediately and just processing a large number of people to help them get back, uh, back to their life, back to real life. Now, the third facility is the McNeil Island facility, which could really serve as an excellent detox center as well. And this was featured in Eric Johnson's Seattle is Dying. Again, uh, another state-owned correctional facility that's largely sitting empty right now. It's on an island in Puget Sound. Uh, it does take a ferry to get out there, but it's a large facility. And uh, it's sitting there largely empty. They could immediately take thousands of drug addicts and help them through this detox process. And on that campus area, that whole island, it could be converted to handle a much larger area. It already has huge buildings, dedicated uh, staff housing, and other benefits that uh, would be hard to replicate and would take millions of dollars to, I mean, just large numbers, probably hundreds of millions of dollars to replicate anywhere else. It's already there. Now, there's some crit, uh, criticism of that facility because they there's a ferry system that they would need to... Um, uh, that, that you have to haul supplies out to. And the state has historically been pretty incompetent when it comes to running ferries and managing that process. But that is a problem much easier to solve than trying to build something from the ground up or just ignoring it and letting the drug addict homeless problem just continue to proliferate. The other nice thing about it is all these facilities are currently state-owned. You don't have to buy new land. You don't have to build new buildings. You don't have to deal with people frustrated or angry that something brand new is coming into their community. The facilities have been there for generations, and it is achievable to convert them and repurpose them for something like this. 
This would certainly, all these facilities would provide much better living situations and much more compassionate and healthier living situations f than the current situation that, and living conditions that people have in tents or in garbage piles, in green spaces, or on the sidewalks in Seattle or Olympia. They clearly would be a substantial improvement over where they currently live now. It would also provide for immediate options. Very quickly, you could get something like this going in weeks and months, not years and theories. Uh, you'd be able to actually not only help the people who need to be helped the most, but you'd help the communities by helping clean up and restore a more sane environment when it comes to the crime issues or the pollution issues that they're currently dealing with. The other uh, option that these facilities would immediately provide is a legal solution to the Ninth Circuit Court ruling, which came out of Idaho a couple of years ago and has largely been used as the excuse by cities uh, all up and down the West Coast as to why they can't force people to not camp in the park. These, uh, because the argument by the court at that time was that, hey, if you don't provide an alternative solution uh, where they can go, then you can't remove them from these locations. And that became kind of this legal uh, excuse anyway to see why some of these collapse enforcement policies have occurred in the West Coast. So this would give them a solution. There would be a place they could go. They could go to Evergreen State College campus. They could go to Maple Lane or the McNeil Island facility to detox. They would actually exist and provide a solution. Because right now the question is, what's the alternative? And the alternative is basically squandering the current billions of dollars that our state and local governments and the feds do in ensuring that people live in squalor and pollution and a dystopian nightmare in the green spaces all around our communities. This video right here is uh, right, like I said, in the city of Olympia. It's across from Capitol Lake within sight of the state legislature, and uh, it is only getting worse. It's expanding and becoming a bigger problem. The environmentalists who at least once claimed to care about the environment in the area have been silent and or silenced, and here you got a landfill piling up right next to Puget Sound, right next to Salmon Streams, right in the green spaces, right in the parks that used to exist in these locations. This is our current situation. This is not an acceptable outcome, whether you're in Seattle or San Francisco or Portland or Olympia. Most rational people would recognize that this is a failure, a failure of policy, a failure of leadership, and a collapse in government finding any kind of rational solution. For all the money they're spending, this is what we're getting. All our taxpayer dollars are funding this utopia that the progressive leadership locally in these cities and the state appears to have accepted as perfectly adequate. So the solutions I propose here, well, they're not perfect. They at least give us a place to start, and we can actually start solving this problem in a practical and effective way, more healthy and safer for the people involved, and certainly better for those of us who live here. Thank you for watching. If you like what you see here, please share and add your comments below. And also don't forget to subscribe. If you don't like what you saw here and you think I've missed something, please add that in the comments below. I do try to read all those comments. I can't always respond to everybody, but I do try to get back to most of you. And I do appreciate any kind of comments you want to add. And remember, the future does belong to those who show up.